Is there a difference between solar today versus 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago? Solar panels improve incrementally. It's the same fundamental chemistry and, and technology. You know, they're silicon doped with a small amount of chemicals to exhibit this photoelectric effect, which is what they use to capture sunlight and turn photons into electrons. Um, you know, we have tested some other versions of the dominant photovoltaic cell. We've used thin film technologies like gallium arsenide and copper indium, galenium and, and selenide. Um, but we're really sticking with the silicon form factor. It changes incrementally annually. The scientists are always perfecting and tinkering. It's probably risen from about a 10% average efficiency in the last decade to closer to 20% average efficiency for a cell. So that means that 18%, 20% of the photons hitting the glass become electrons, which is a remarkable physical phenomena. Uh, they think theoretically they can get to 30%. So it will shift through time. But you know, the, the core device, you know, a glass box with some silicon cells wrapped in an aluminium frame and glass sandwich has not really changed that much. The stuff that goes with it is changing. The power electronics, they're becoming smarter so that these devices can arbitrage the electrons they produce. They can sort of sell them in real time like an internet shifting bits and bytes of data across a network. That's going to be the future we move to and that's a big opportunity space. Things like blockchain come to play. And then there's storage, which is now going increasingly hand in hand with solar because, you know, as many pundits and skeptics will say, the sun doesn't shine all the time. And so you've got to store this. That's true. The good news is we know when the sun does shine, it, it, it works on a very consistent track. And we know the exact times and, and dates. And if that changes, we've got bigger problems than whether the electricity is working. So we can calculate how much solar will come and then we can build out the storage capacity required to manage the rest of the time. And that's what we're doing increasingly. And storage comes in electrochemical batteries. It comes in pump storage technologies, new kinetic technologies. And that's a, another opportunity space. So with what I do, you know, we, are, we back entrepreneurs and startups in this space. And a lot of them are more in the software that are choreographing the electrons to meet supply, make demand just in time or to, to build batteries and, and the components of the, gr the grid of the future, which is going to be one built around more distributed energy resources, the one where the sidewalk is producing power, the car is storing it and selling it back to the grid, and you know it's a, a much more interactive uh, network reality, a, a layered architecture of different scales of, of loads and, and demand centers and supply and all of those assets in that distributed energy resource network are managed by intelligence, you know, software of a kind. So that's where we play as investors. Um, and it's a very exciting space, and it's where, you know, the jobs and the wealth creation of the future are. Uh, as the uh, presidential candidate Kamala Harris mentioned at her town hall this week, uh, the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics cites the two biggest jobs in the United States economy this half of the century going forward are uh, solar panel installer and wind industry technician. You know, like this is a huge blue collar space um, for work. And then there's all the financial engineering, software engineering, sales and other service business elements that go with this distributed architecture of producers and consumers collaborating to create the power system seamlessly and painlessly and at lower cost. Um, that's the kind of business we look for, actually, and, and they'll do very well. So if people wanted to learn more about solar energy and the projects that you've got your hands in and how they can uh, either pitch in or benefit from this, um, where should they go? Well, to learn about solar energy, you know, I, I run blogs and, and a Twitter feed and other things that's always on about this and, and happy to share. And if people want to get to Twitter at Danny K's Fun, S-F-U-N, which stands for Solar for Universal Needs. So Danny K, Danny Kennedy, my name, and then initial S-F-U-N. That's one place to go. I, I would recommend also, um, if they're interested in getting involved in the industry, the new Energy Nexus website, energynexus.co, is a good resource for entrepreneurs and others that want to start businesses and see what opportunities there are in the space. 
and there's a lot of information and resources there to learn more about the subject material as well. There's plenty of good sites out there. Organizations like Vote Solar and PowerForAll.org are fantastic depending on where you want to work and, and play. Um, but you know, the main point is to get involved. You know, this needs to be a movement, not a moment. We, we still have a lot of work to do. The rooftop revolution's just begun and it is a long haul to replace this incumbency of dirty energy with clean energy. It's gonna take all of us, all of our ideas um, and ingenuity is more important really than anything. You know, the combining of what we've got, these existing technologies in ingenious ways is really what we're after and um, would implore people to get involved and, and help we'll put their shoulder to the wheel so we can make this change happen as quickly as possible.